Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about hosting your site. And what I mean by hosting your site is how you take the pages that you've been working on so far and put them up on the internet for everyone else to see them. In order to host your site, you need two things. You need first a domain name. That's the name that people look at in your URL. The second thing you need is a hosting company, usually called a hosting service. And they are going to be the ones who act as the server for your, for your files to let other people see them. So first, let's talk about domain names. Usually, when you go to buy a domain name, you're going to purchase it for multiple years at a time, because it really doesn't make that much sense to own your domain name for only a single year, unless, of course, maybe you're running for, for an election or doing something where you know you only want it up for a short time. The most common domain names have the domain ending of .com, but more and more, the other extensions are gaining acceptance. So if you go to buy a domain name, and the only way you can get the name you really want is to use .net or .biz, that's OK. I recommend that you still go ahead and do it. The important thing to know is that domain names by themselves, they're really pretty much completely useless. You can own it, but unless you have files there that people can look at, no one's going to be able to go there and see anything. So this is where the hosting services come in. So if you were to look at your URL right now on your page, when you make a file and you right click and you're looking at your site in Chrome or Internet Explorer or anything like that, you're probably going to notice that the protocol is file. We don't want that. We don't want it to be file or C colon or my documents. We want it to be something that looks like www. And that's where the hosting company comes in. So what you need is a registered IP address to connect your domain name with the internet. So hosting services are going to vary. They go from free to what I call mid-range to really full service. And so you need to decide what kind of hosting service best fits you. To be honest, I usually recommend free when you're getting started and then make your way up. But let's talk about the pros and cons of each one. So with free services, you really have little or no control over your domain name. So if you go and look at some other people's, particularly from your school, your work, things where people are, are not really there just for the domain name, is you're going to see things like wix.whatever.whatever .whatever .whatever and then your name. You're going to have really limited tools. Sometimes when you pay for a site, you're going to be able to have email registration, different things like that. Free services don't really want to give you too much freedom because they're a little worried about what you're going to do. The, probably the worst part about free services is that there's a lot of advertising and redirects. If somebody goes to your site and makes the smallest little typo, rather than getting a nice, friendly warning, they're probably going to be redirected to somebody trying to sell something. The nice part about free services is that they have a very familiar look and feel across all of them. If you sign up for one service and learn how to do your hosting on it, you can pretty much rest assured that you're going to be able to manipulate your files on any other free service as well. So let's talk about paid services, both the mid-range and the full. With paid services, you tend to have much better tools for manipulating your code. It's not just about putting your, your files up on the web. You can do things like have email, uh, email filters, send out um, special what we call cron jobs. Cron jobs are different um, files that you can run at different times of the day. So if you want to have a database, you want to have a list server, you want to have emails, then you might want to pay for the paid services. The other really nice thing about paid services is that there's technical support available to you. So you can go ahead and email, chat, anything you need. You're not going to find that with the free services, or it just won't be quite as good. But before you go for the paid services, I really recommend that you check for free services through work or school as well. A lot of time, these free services still have the really great, great tools and the support, but you just don't have to pay for them. So if in the end you're not quite sure what you want to do, if you want to go with free or paid, I know it can be overwhelming when you decide what you're going to do. So I've simply recommended one site that I know a lot of my students use, and that's Bytehost. You'd go ahead and go to this URL, bytehost.com. Notice that it's B-E-Y-T-H-O-S-T.com. Once you get signed up, you're going to want to make sure that you remember the password that you type in, because they're not going to mail it back to you. And if you can't remember it, it's really going to lead to a lot of problems. In fact, you'll probably end up giving up and signing up for another account. Once you've done that and you've filled it out, you're probably going to need to check your spam, because in that spam, they're going to send you an email that tells you all the details that you're going to need in order to connect through either cPanel or some other type of FTP device. So I hope you're excited, and I hope you're going to take that next step, and that you want to go and post your work out on the web. Good luck.